Tonight on Rock Center, a groundbreaking look inside the Church of Scientology. For the first time on TV, Oscar winner Paul Haggis, the highest profile Scientologist ever to leave the church, speaks out to Harry Smith. Does this concern you? Are having this conversation right now? Yes, of course it does. It's insanity. This is incredibly stupid. These are not people you want to mess with. And one family describes what they claim they endured to break free of the church. Well, they separate us. I, I sleep in a male dorm, Lucy sleeps in a female dorm, and there's a guard outside. Do you know how crazy I do. this sounds? I know. It was crazy to us as well. Good evening and welcome to Rock Center. Tonight we devote much of our broadcast to explosive accounts from former members of the Church of Scientology. For the first time on television, you will hear from the Oscar winner whose break with the church got a lot of attention in Hollywood where Scientologists famously include people like Tom Cruise. You will also hear from Lawrence Wright, the Pulitzer Prize winning author whose controversial new book on the church, Going Clear, came out just today. He set out to understand why some members commit themselves so deeply to Scientology. What he found adds a complicated, often troubling layer to our understanding of the church. Harry Smith has our report. Why did you finally leave the church? I was ashamed of my own stupidity, of how I could have been so purposely blind for so many years. Paul Haggis is the Oscar-winning writer and director of Crash, and the most famous Scientologist to ever leave the church and speak out publicly. Everyone who's left has left quietly. Everyone's so scared. All the well-known people. So I can't do that. Uh, if I leave, I leave loudly. We met Haggis in Rome, where he is working on a new movie. The Canadian-born filmmaker first joined the church when he was a troubled 21-year-old looking for answers. I was in love with a woman who I just couldn't get along with. And they said, we can help you with that. <laughs> and uh, that's how it started. Did Scientology help you early on? Yes. Yes, it did. I think... Um, it's like picking up any really good self-help book, you're going to get something out of it. One of the fundamental principles of Scientology is that a person can improve his condition only if he is allowed to find his own truth about himself. Scientology is based on the idea that everyone can achieve freedom from unwanted emotions and physical discomfort. Haggis, like all Scientologists, attended auditing sessions, a form of one-on-one -on -one counseling. It's like very specific I guess in psychoanalysis. Um, they would kill me for saying that, but they're going to kill me anyway. <laughs> so, because they hate the comparison between the two. But uh, you are, uh, yeah, it's, it's like a therapy session. What do you think it is about Scientology that gets a hold of people? You know, I think there are things that actually help you. They help you get along a little better with your wife, your husband. They help you, you know, understand your boss a little better. If there's nothing that actually helped you in your life, then it would never get a hold of you. Haggis went to Hollywood in 1977 and got his first break working as a writer for cartoon shows. As he climbed the show business ladder into primetime TV and movies, many of his friends were Scientologists too. He was an accepted, even celebrated member of a community. How do they convince people to be loyal? It's just this long slow uh, walk towards um, believing. The, the, it's the idea of being part of a group that is ostracized and hated. It, it bands you together against the outside world. But then, after more than 30 years in the church, the outside world came crashing in. It was around the time of Proposition 8 that, that things started to really get to a head. Proposition 8 was a California initiative to block gay marriage. I was out with my daughters trying to do picketing and donating money to try and uh, stop Proposition 8. And then I found out that a, a branch of the church was supporting it, and I got very upset. The church says it was merely one Scientologist who signed a petition, and he was not representing the church. Long a champion of liberal causes, Haggis began to wonder what his church really stood for, and for the first time, began his own research. I went, oh my God, is this really happening? 
He learned of allegations of abuse at the highest levels of the church from a series of articles in the St. Petersburg Times. Stories of physical violence and involuntary confinement. Haggis was particularly shocked when he read allegations on anti-Scientology websites of children made to work 12 to 16 hours a day. It's a horrible treatment these kids had. Terrible. They're made to work so often and, and, and so, uh, all day long in these, these terrible conditions. F*** them for that. Yeah, they should be taken down for that. The church denies any of this abuse happened. They say Haggis' investigation was a sham and that there is no record, no police reports, no medical records, no photos to support these allegations. The church also says it adheres to all child labor laws. Haggis resigned from the church in 2009 and made his break public two years ago when the New Yorker published a controversial profile by reporter Lawrence Wright. I expected when I did this interview uh, with Larry, people would just go, oh, that's, this, is, he's, this is the stupidest man on earth, isn't it? And, and I probably am. I think that's the problem. You are purposely blind. I was purposely blind. For you the chose choice. to be blind. Of course we chose. Anybody within a group like this has to choose to be blind. Haggis says he has been largely shunned by those in the Scientology community, but has heard from others that his resignation gave them the courage to quit as well. He is now part of the Pulitzer Prize winning author Lawrence Wright's new book, out today called Going Clear, Scientology, Hollywood, and the Prison of Belief, which is based on Wright's investigation of the church, including interviews with more than 200 people, mostly former members. What I was struck by is the people that I met with initially were really bright and interesting people. They were not uh, freakish, they were not crackpots. Uh, they, they had their own reasons for being drawn into this organization. Science fiction writer L. Ron Hubbard founded the church in 1954. And while the religion has been a positive, transformative experience for some, it has long been shadowed by allegations that people have been emotionally and sometimes even physically abused. I don't think anybody would join Scientology in order to be abusive. You know, they, want, they go into Scientology because they want help. But at the deeper levels, as you go you know, further and further into the church, the distortions become more and more apparent. And it's at those levels that I think Scientology has lost its way. Why do you think the church is so controversial? It has a history of being very vindictive and litigious. And uh, it has a history of infiltrating the government and spying on people. And so it has created an atmosphere of fear that surrounds it. In the 1970s, the church launched a massive domestic espionage effort called Operation Snow White because the church believed the government was collecting information damaging to the church. Following an FBI raid, 11 Scientologists, including Hubbard's wife, were convicted of infiltrating numerous government agencies and stealing documents. Does this concern you, our having this conversation right now? Yes, of course it does. It's insanity. This is incredibly stupid. These are, these are not people you want to mess with. For his heresy, the church has labeled Haggis the hypocrite of Hollywood and says he has not been an active member for years. And while Haggis says in retrospect that he was never a true believer, he did tell us about going clear, where a person clears his mind of negative influences before becoming what Scientologists called an operating thetan, or OT, the equivalent of an immortal soul. It isn't something you have. You wouldn't say, my thetan. You'd simply say, me. There are many levels of spiritual enlightenment in Scientology. After they claim, I went to the top. You went to the top? Mm -hmm. OT7. And that was the top in the late 70s. But by that time, Haggis says he was having serious doubts when he reached an earlier level called OT3, a crucial rite of passage that introduces Scientologists to key tenets of the church's beliefs, including the notion that the human body is host to aliens from outer space. You're introduced to the concept of body thetans, that is, alien beings, uh, space aliens, uh, that have infested your body by the scores or the hundreds. And uh, those are the things that are giving you all your problems in your life, your neuroses, your fears, your phobias, your anxieties and uh, it may be your sexual confusion. Haggis was stunned when he reviewed the material for OT3. And I read the materials, they're handwritten by, by Hubbard. 
and I went, what the hell is this? I mean, I could justify a lot of things in the past, and I could uh, say, okay, but this, this, there's nothing to justify. This is, damn, this is ins- This is madness. This is absolute madness. Why'd you stay then? It's a part of your life at that point. Your kids are in school. Uh, your friends, your wife. Um, it's what you know. Is Scientology a cult? Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. It's, it's, uh, it's a system of belief that I mean, you've got all these p- folks inside this fortress who, who won't look out and won't look at any criticism and can't bear to, 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 to any investigation and, and think that everyone is against them. How would you describe that? It's a cult. Of course it is. As seen in this church video, there may be no more powerful marketing tool than the cult of celebrity. And perhaps there is no more important Scientologist than actor Tom Cruise. L. Ron Hubbard, known to his followers simply as LRH, courted stars from the very beginning. Tom Cruise has introduced LRH technology to over one billion people of Earth. I think it's a privilege to call yourself a Scientologist. Here, Cruz is being awarded Scientology's first Freedom Medal of Valor by church leader David Miscavige. What moral responsibility do you think these stars have to know about the alleged abuses in the church? These stars have been, in my opinion, exploited uh, to advance Scientology. And so people join it because of them. And therefore, I think they have a tremendous moral responsibility to know what actually is happening inside the church. When you left the church, you described it as an act of treason. Yes, it was a treasonous act. If you have an enemy who's declared himself an enemy, that's a bad thing. But if you have a friend who's then stabbed you in the back, that's worse. And that's what uh, they claimed I did, and that's actually what I did. Strong words, and after the break, when Harry's reporting continues, a family who devoted their lives, as you heard, to Scientology, they're describing practices a lot of people would find inconceivable, like parents separated from their own children. That was with us. Nobody, nobody cared about her at all. She saw her mother even less than I did. Eight years old. Yeah, she was eight. And I had to put her to bed every night crying, asking for her parents. 